The Apple Vision Pro. Where do I even begin? What's up, Internet? I'm Brian McDuff, AKA BMAC, and welcome to another video. So yes, the Apple Vision Pro. So many things to cover. So I suppose the best place to start would simply be with the design. And what makes this Apple Vision Pro AR VR headset what it is. When you first look at the Apple Vision Pro, there's no denying that this thing is beautiful. You get this ever so beautiful curved front glass with an outward facing display built within it that allows the user's eyes to be shown, which lets actual real life individuals around you know when you're using apps or if you're immersed. It does work in the sense that you can see where the user's eyes are, if they're blinking or not, but it does kind of come across as not quite at that level of quality that Apple promised and showed to us pre-release. Another aspect of the Apple Vision Pro that's quite different from other AR VR headsets that you might be used to is the detached battery. To power the Apple Vision Pro, you do need to use the detached battery pack here, which is gonna be tethered to the Apple Vision Pro headset itself through a proprietary connection here on the left side. And I found right here, this whole system to be somewhat non-Apple-esque. I get that you need to reserve the front part for all the cameras, the processing power, the displays, all of that. But even still, I thought that Apple would have figured out a way to actually implement the battery pack, perhaps somehow into the band itself, which could actually act as a counterweight to the somewhat heaviness of the front of the headset, because that in and of itself is another thing worth talking about. The Apple Vision Pro is definitely an AR VR headset that I would consider to be on the heavier side. It's not insanely heavy, but definitely probably heavier than you would expect or want. And at the end of the day, it does play a factor into the overall comfortability. Luckily, the light shield cushion padding itself is very soft around your eyes. It's pretty breathable, pretty comfortable, but I haven't quite found that to be enough to alleviate the pressure that you're ultimately gonna feel around your eyes, especially on your forehead or your upper cheekbones. Now, speaking of those bands we were just talking about, you do get two different bands with the Apple Vision Pro. One is going to be the solo band, like you see right here, a one piece band, while the other one is a dual loop band, which is a two strap adjustment style band. I've tried both, and to be honest, I really can't tell all that big of a difference. I guess I lean a little bit more towards the solo band just because it looks a little cooler. I feel like it's a little bit more padded and a little bit more comfortable. And also because it has this knob style tightening adjustment here on the side, as opposed to this strap style adjustment. For further customization, you do get two different sizes of the light shield cushions included. So you could pick whatever one fits your particular head size and shape best. But then you also have the light shield itself. And this is probably one of the parts of the Apple Vision Pro design that I actually hate the most. I cannot tell you how many times over the last couple of weeks I've grabbed the Apple Vision Pro by the light shield, which runs the risk of dropping this thing completely out of your hands and allowing the Vision Pro to fall to the floor where it could shatter. Luckily that hasn't happened for me, but because of this magnet system we have here with the light shield, it's very surprising to me why Apple didn't implement some kind of locking system, because it's not like you're gonna be swapping out the light shield left and right, as if it's something you do on a daily basis. But to finish things off as it relates to design, on top of the headset itself, you do have a top button, as well as a digital crown, both of which are easy enough and simple enough to use, which makes your overall physical interaction with the Apple Vision Pro pretty easy. So design-wise, let's just say here, Gotta give Apple some credit for designing what is a very beautiful headset on their first generation attempt. But once you get past the pretty looks, there is quite a bit of room for improvement that's gonna make the overall design that much better, especially when you're actually wearing it. But now with design out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of how this thing works and how you can actually use the Apple Vision Pro in your day-to-day -day life. The very first thing I noticed with the Apple Vision Pro was the pass-through video. When I first tried this bad boy on, I gotta be completely honest here, I for a second didn't remember if this was actually see-through or not with the front glass. That's how realistic the video pass-through mode is, but once you got used to it after a few minutes, a few hours, you kind of start to see it for what it is. It's super realistic and really good, but you could still tell that it's a video re-representation. So not completely seamless as Apple would like you to probably think, but still probably 
credit where credit is due, the best on the market right now. On the other side of things, you do have your virtual reality environments, which are obviously going to be environments without that pass through video, which is going to fully immerse you in different areas throughout the world, such as at Yosemite National Park. The attention to detail in these Apple Vision Pro environments that are provided to you nothing short of stunning and it really feels like you're there now i think one other major hurdle in delivering the overall best immersive spatial computing experience is going to be bringing you to the closest you can to feeling like you don't have a computer on your face while you have a computer on your face. And as it relates to the Apple Vision Pro, you are gonna see some black edges at the edges of your peripheral. Do you get used to it? Yeah, probably. Is it a disadvantage? No, it's very much on par with what you're getting from other AR VR headsets on the market right now. I was just hoping that Apple was gonna do a little bit more at widening that field of view, overall immersing yourself in your spatial computing more than what the competition is offering. But speaking of field of view, we do have to touch on quickly here, one of the major advantages that the Vision Pro is offering, that being eye tracking, which truth be told, eye tracking on the Vision Pro, nothing short of mind blowing. The fact that the Vision Pro knows where you're looking and allows you to actually interact with your app windows, resizing them, repositioning them, all with just your eyes and using pinch gestures with your hands, that to me is just awesome. Truly some next level technology that we're seeing here in AR VR headsets. And it completely, for the most part, eliminates any need for handheld controllers. But having said that, it's not perfect. I personally found the eye tracking on the Vision Pro to not always be super accurate and super consistent. In fact, sometimes when I'm using the Vision Pro and I'm looking at a certain button and I'm trying to select it, Sometimes it feels like the eye tracking is off by a few inches, if you will, within my environment. Now, I don't know if this is because I wear contact lenses, and from what I've read online, there are other contact lens wearers experiencing the same kind of issues. Or maybe it's just a slight recalibration issue when I'm taking the Vision Pro off and putting it back on again. I'm not entirely sure, but it is something I'm experiencing. It's not all the time, but it's definitely more consistent than I would want it to be, even after redoing eye setup a few times, it's still something I'm actually witnessing. That could probably be fixed in future Vision OS updates, but as it stands right now, somewhat of a bummer to have that a factor at all when the Vision Pro is pretty much reliant on that for the overall interaction. The other challenge here is undoubtedly gonna be the learning curve. The pinch gesture on your hand is easy enough, but when you're using that in combination with the eye tracking to make a selection within the Vision Pro, you really do have to learn how to use this device and to do it in a way that actually feels right. You really gotta make your eyes and your pinch gestures one, and there is a slight learning curve to actually doing that. The one area of the Apple Vision Pro where I think it suffers the most is with the typing experience. Now this is with the current Vision OS that I'm running and things could change tomorrow with new updates to the keyboard and the way it works. But as it stands right now with my experience over the last couple of weeks, you have to interact with the keyboard within your Apple Vision Pro in such a way where you look at each individual letter with your eye tracking and pinch gesture with your hand to make the selection for each letter within a word. Or you could pinch that bottom bar of a keyboard and bring it closer to you at which point, once it is close enough to you, you can interact with the keyboard pressing one key at a time, which is a little bit faster and a little bit quicker, but still super slow compared to what I could actually do on a physical keyboard. To fix this almost instantaneously would be to implement swipe typing, just like we have on the iPhone, just like we have on the iPad. You just bring that keyboard closer to you, you use your index finger to swipe type, I feel like that would completely make the typing experience on the Vision Pro better, but as it stands right now, without an external magic keyboard that you connect to your Vision Pro or without using voice dictation, don't expect the typing experience to be quick and easy. It's gonna take some time and it's gonna be a little cumbersome. But as it relates to the display within the Vision Pro, my goodness, stunning, beautiful. Amazing. There really aren't enough adjectives to describe it. I mean, you're getting a micro OLED display composed of 23 million pixels, delivering an effective resolution of better than 4K for your eyes. It speaks for itself. The display within the Apple Vision Pro is no joke. I don't think app windows could get any sharper than they already are. And at their current resolution, I think they look absolutely amazing. But I know what you're probably thinking. With all this technology, all these cameras, all this coming together, how long could you actually expect the Apple Vision Pro to last for? 
What's your average session gonna look like with using the tethered detached battery? For battery life, Apple's actually promising up to two hours of general use with the Vision Pro with its included detached tethered battery. And actually a little bit more than that, probably closer to two and a half hours or even three hours when you're just watching video. And that seems pretty much on par with what I'm getting for my general usage here, but bigger picture, little disappointing. I just don't get why Apple didn't make this bigger to give it a bigger battery capacity to provide a boost in battery performance and overall longer battery life. If you're already detaching it, why not beef this thing up to boast better battery life numbers? Now you do have the ability of actually using the Apple Vision Pro when it's tethered to its battery while you're charging the battery with the included USB-C to USB-C cable and the 30 watt power adapter. I suppose you could always use an external power bank to power your Apple Vision Pro battery, so you'd have a battery charging a battery powering the Vision Pro. It's kind of crazy you even have to think that way. I suppose you could do that. Bottom line, I suppose if you're always going to be using the Vision Pro while seated or stationary, you could always just plug it in and this, this is essentially going to be a non-issue for you. But for anyone who's going to be mobile or walking around with the Vision Pro, you're going to care about battery life and I bet you're going to wish it was a little bit better and you would have taken a slightly bigger tethered battery to get there. But with all this having been said, this brings us to my overall thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro and how I could actually use it in my daily life and with my creator workflow. In the beginning, I was pretty much blown away by the Apple Vision Pro and arguably I still am. But when I started to use the Vision Pro in my daily workflow for actual work, that's where things started to change a little. Life without the Vision Pro almost seemed a little easier. I found it easier to just read books on my Kindle device. I found it a little more comfortable and arguably a little bit quicker and easier to just flick on a movie or TV show on my 4K TV set. I found it much more efficient to edit video on my MacBook Air with its display, even though it's drastically smaller. I'm just finding it hard to fully embrace this AR VR headset, at least as it relates to my life and what I would use this for in my daily workflow, because I'm conflicted. The experience is awesome. The technology is impressive. But ultimately, what it comes down to is the fact that I don't know what problems the Apple Vision Pro solves for me. Some of you might need this. Some of you might find many problems that this could solve for you. If you need to be working with 3D rendering or augmented or virtual realities, in general, this is gonna be pretty awesome for you. And if you could afford the Apple Vision Pro and it's nothing to you, get it. You're gonna love your experience with it. But for the price tag, and I very rarely, if ever, like to use price as a huge component of my reviews here on this channel, but I have to for this one because it is an expensive product. And for its price tag, I don't think at this time the AR VR experience you're getting in the Apple Vision Pro at the core is all that different from other AR VR headsets, some of which are a fraction of the price of what the Apple Vision Pro has. In and of itself, is the Apple Vision Pro an awesome product? Yes. Do I love it? Yes. Is it perfect? No. Is there room for improvement? Yes. It's gonna take a while for me to fully embrace this AR VR headset as a product that I would recommend to anyone because right now it's still a very expensive product, arguably for a very niche market. But those are my thoughts. Don't forget to leave your own thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you think. And as always, if you want the latest prices, promos, deals, or information for the Apple Vision Pro, you can of course always head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash Apple Vision Pro, or of course, there's always gonna be clickable links in the video description box and in the comment section below as well. So check those out. But with that having been said, now it is time for me to go beat the next level of the Fruit Ninja game. My goodness, that'll blow your mind. You wanna some fruit? Download Fruit Ninja on the Apple Vision Pro. It's nuts. I will see you guys in my next video.